Welcome back to Pro League, everybody. Pro League. Pro League. Pro League. My name is Valdez, and with me is Moonglade. We are casting SK Telecom T1 versus Star Tail Yoey with a current 2 0 lead by SK Telecom T1. Indeed, we are Valdez. Classic versus Life up now. Classic only played one PVZ this season, losing to Rogue in a wonky game where Rogue went for some uh, hatches in the main after a cannon oh, rush. Oh, yeah. You remember that? That game was insane, man. That actually got like a highlight, I believe. Yeah, that saw was that on Twitter. That was a um, weird game. Uh, Classic actually went for a cannon rush with a double probe. It finally got like kind of held off, but Rogue, he had a couple of drones out on the map, and he's like, well, what do I do with these? I guess I'll just double proxy hatch your that's main. That's right, that's <laughs> right. Super weird, but great sort of uh, on the fly sort of thoughts from uh, from Rogue to win that game. Yeah. Here's life. Three and two this season, one and one versus Protoss. Very emotional song to bring him into this. Yeah, interesting. It says, because you're my girl. Um, he has a girlfriend now, that's right. Do you makes sense, oh my god. We, remember we, are, that? we are on the case moon late tonight. In the MVP. Solving all the problems. Didn't he say this in the MVP uh, I believe so, interview? Yeah. Well, there you go, guys. <laughs> Life, another guy who loves to control the game and just be off the cuff. Can he do the same to Classic that Rogue did? Let's jump into game number three between Classic and Life. Up here in the top right, the Protoss player in red, it is classic. Down here, bottom right, it's life. <laughs> World champion of 2014. I have his toothbrush at home. Do you know? I kept it when he went to DreamHack winter and he stayed in my room for one night. Wait, did you really? Yeah. <laughs> he forgot it. I kept it. It's still in my, it's still in my apartment. Moonlight's a true fan. Yep. No one else has that except his girlfriend, maybe. Maybe. Well, jumping into this map, it's Deadwing, a very big map, and uh, the possible spawns are cross spawns or vertical spawns, and we do have vertical spawns here. We do have vertical spawns. Definitely opens up to more aggression early on. We are seeing that first person view at the start of the game, so we can see how they spam their workers where they move their scouting probe and yep. drone. Only Im the important things here at Pro League for you guys. I want to make sure you, you I get to know, see everything I that happens in the first three minutes. Where's that second overlord going, guys? Let's have a look. <laughs> it's almost out of the main base. Where are you Oh, it just going? went off the screen. We're Where's gonna, that We're going to be gone. Where's it going? I don't know, <laughs> Valdez. But it's uh, somewhere interesting. It's going to be scouting out the natural base of life, looking for perhaps cannons? Cannons are coming on this map, Valdez. We did see Classic go for a cannon rush just the other day where he did lose to Rune. Yeah, but this time it seems like we have a bit of a mix-up, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we do have a Nexus first. A bit of a wonky do going for that Nexus first. Not a bad choice considering. Life as well, though, going for that double hatch before pool. So well read, even though he hasn't scouted it just yet. Kind of noticing that no probes, perhaps, are by his base. And he's like, oh, he's not cannon rushing. I can go for double hash mm. before pool. That natural overlord is going towards the third base now, Valdez. This is what the first person <laughs> view does for us this early on. This is what we need to know. Thank God for first person view. I don't want to see it in the late game, though, because that'll just throw me off. Yeah, I, yeah. we would never want to see that, man. No one's even asked for that as well now. No I mean, I look, at, I look at Reddit every day. And I have not seen. I haven't seen anything. Anyone about talk that. about health bars, or <laughs> especially when, not health bars, or when the first person view is. Have not seen multiple threads about. I mean, that. I have no problem with health bars. I got the observer PC. I see everything. <laughs> then. I'm not complaining. Oh God, made. But here we go. It is that gateway before Forge before. Well, it was Nexus before Gateway, but the yeah. Gateway is finished. Cybercore on the way. Have to wait and see exactly. 
what Classic has planned this game against someone like Life. Not a bad idea to do a timing on this map. Uh, considering these vertical spawns, a lot easier than cross map. This kind of positions as well uh, give Zerg the opportunity to go for a much easier sort of swarm host play. If they so to so, if they so choose that, I feel like Life's swarm host play is definitely one of his weaker sort of uh, styles. He doesn't use it that much at all. And when he does, he, he doesn't seem to win that often. Yeah, very true. I actually wouldn't like to see it too much here. Um, you know, like you were saying, the positions are pretty good, but not his best build to be exact. I believe um, we were watching Snoot Stream, was it? Together, and he actually went Swarm Host on this map. That guy is actually insane Dude, with Swarm Host. That guy goes Swarm Host on every map, and I love <laughs> him for it. I love watching his stream so much. Yeah, man, it's even fun for me. Like, you just like, yeah, you just see all these units get pulled into the Locusts over and over again until the Protoss leaves, and I think that gets fantastic. I wish it's I could exactly play. Exactly what you want to see, man. Uh, I wish I could play, I could play uh, Swarm Host that good. We are seeing a very, very fast, extremely fast third base from Classic as well. Two yep. Zerglings can actually do a lot of damage to a sentry. He's got to be careful. Does not want to lose it. The I mic around the sentry. He might. Oh, should. second sentry comes in here. Should be enough to <laughs> keep him alive. <laughs> oh, Eight man. HP. Eight HP left. And the forge goes down front. Definitely one of the great advantages of this map. Uh, big ramp in front of the third base. Life's looking to punish this. This is a very, very greedy opening out of classic... It is greedy, but I mean, how much can he really do? If he can get in there before Warp Gate is finished, and it is almost finished now, maybe he can do something, but there's still three sentries, three force fields at the very least. He's not going to be finding much. Yeah. Regardless, though, he has made a huge swell of lings. Maybe just reading into this too much. Thought he could do some more damage. But like we were saying, mm. this is not going to do much. As long as he puts down a good force field. Does save both sentries, it looks like. Yeah. But now life is going to get to work on that one weak pylon, actually, there on the left side. Yeah, forcing maybe some uh, some awkward warp-ins. And definitely getting rid of all the sentry energy while he drones up that third base. Only on one gas for now. What will Life's follow-up be? He does have a Ridge Warren, but I think it's more of a safety Ridge Warren than anything else. Trying to come in here once again with the Lings, but this time the Force Field is good. And with the Cannon there this time, it's going to be pretty easy to hold this one off. Warps in some more sensories even. He should be just fine. Now I wonder if we're going to see a Twilight go down from here. It wouldn't be a bad choice. We are seeing that Robo being added. But uh, you know what? Link Stalker wouldn't be a bad move. We did see... I believe it was Zest go for Blink Stalkers on this map against the Zerg in recent times. Yeah, he went for that Oracle opening, three gate into third base. In these exact same positions, or yeah. maybe reversed. Or, yeah, reversed. Zest was on the bottom. And there's that Twilight shortly after that river. That plus one about finished. Getting pretty close. That Twilight Council timing is almost exactly lined up with that plus one finishing. Hmm. Maybe if he throws a chrono boost on it. All right, we'll see. We're going road speed. We're getting borrowed. So life gearing up for his Ling Roach kind of pressure, aggression. Do whatever he can find. Maybe he wants to try and hit the Protoss as they move out. And Classic definitely uh, intends to. We blink on the way. Warp Prism on the map very shortly. Plus two, no doubt, going to be upgraded next very quickly. And three gateways added. Okay. I sense a timing attack, Valdez. Yeah, man. Would have to agree with you there. I was wondering if you saw that War Prism. He does now. And he's got to know some funny businesses out on the map. Doesn't see all the tech, of course, but he knows there's a War Prism coming his way. Lucination Scout is going to come in first. See what kind of defense is here. This is kind of the time that... You wish you went Swarm Host because Swarm Host uh, does absolutely fantastic against this kind of build. If you get them out in time, Locusts do great against gateway units in general and especially against the likes of Stalkers. We are seeing the, uh, the Robo Bay being added on as a late addition. Perhaps as a follow up, perhaps in case Classic does see Swarm Host on the map. And oh no, that is not a good position for an infestation pit. No, it is not. He may actually want to just focus that down. He's got so many 
force fields. He can stay here for so long. And look at this. A bunch of zealots coming into the main at the same time. Seven of them. Life's just going for a counterattack in the meantime. What has he got back at home? No sentries. Oh, this is can be a bit of a mistake. We do see so many zealots targeting down the lair at the same time. That counterattack in the third base of Classic, not finding much. Not finding much indeed. A lot of warpins there as well. Although this does get cleaned up in the main. So at least they do trade for now. They do trade. Not too much damage done by either. Some bird roaches in the natural of Classic. Yeah, this is actually going to hold Classic back for a while. He had a big army out on the map with a ton of force fields right behind that. He did get that infestation pit, something to note. And that's going to cause life to remake that now. Second Robo facility being uh, put down. And we are seeing Colossi production. He's going to get going to that very, very strong Blink Stalker, Colossi. Going to be doing great against what life has so far. Life hasn't really decided what he's going to go into next. I feel like it was going to be some sort of infestation tick, whether it's going to be Tier 3 or Swarm Host. From here, probably Swarm Host. Well, we already see Classic gearing up for such a fantastic sort of composition to deal with that early on. And there's that Enduring Locust upgrade. Here we go, guys. Got some Swarmos on the way. Not yet on the production tab, but like you were saying, the upgrade is on the way. We do have a huge counterattack coming once again from Life. This is what he loves to do. Looks like there's a probe down there looking to take a fourth base, but Life is going to put that to a stop, or he may just want to go straight for the front. There is a Colossus here. If he can break through, possibly target it down. Ooh. The Roaches have fire removers uh, as well. Can go under that force field at the same time. We do see a lot of damage on the third and fourth base of Life. So Life going to have to really make something happen this time. Yeah, he's got to do a ton of damage here. Even his fourth base, it looks like, is under attack at the same time. You can see on the mini-map, these Roaches do take down a Colossus, but he's lost his third base. Now the Roach is still in the main base here of Classic, trying to do some damage. Well, that cleaned up for now. I feel like this third base going down, though, is pretty big for life. He doesn't want to lose that right now. He's still got a really nice position behind that third base as well, Classic does. You never want to be on three bases against the Protoss that's on three bases. It's probably the worst thing in the universe. Losing that base is so hard to hold onto this base in these positions, uh, dealing with Blink Stalkers like that. And ooh, nice work from uh, from Life though in the main base, clearing out a lot of probes. Well, probes same time, counter attack on the third base once again. Trying to do some damage. The first Sormos are beginning to come out, but it's not enough. And he's got a lot of uh, force fields here still, but a lot of these sentries are being focused down by the Roach. Is very nicely done. It's going to be make it much harder for the Sormos to be dealt with with no Colossi to join those stalkers yet. Still, that third base has not been remade for life either. Life trying his best to kill that Colossi. Still on 58 HP though. Will not be finding that kill and life wants to push the aggression. Moving up with Roaches and more Swarm Hosts. This is going to be such a hard push against two Robo Colossi. It's probably the hardest thing in the world to do and most likely destined for failure. It should not work. But I mean, with these constant Roach harasses in uh, every base with these Burrow Roach, there is potential. There's potential indeed, and if there's one player to make it work, I think it is life. But like you were saying, not the greatest position for him right now. Still waiting to put down or remake that fourth base. And he still just has not done it yet. Classic in the meantime still has that probe waiting to put down the fourth. He's been waiting in eternity. He actually has a fifth Colossi at the back of his natural that he isn't using with his army composition as well. Uh, could really uh -oh. use that right now. He would have five <laughs> Colossi in his ball. Upgrading plus three. And making two more Colossi, he's going for like the hardest counter to what Life has planned. And Life is still miles away from Hive, so he doesn't have Vipers, which are going to really help out in dealing with the Colossi. There is no way that really Life can fight this army head on, and there's only one direction this army is going, and it's right down the middle of the right side to, to fight these Swarmos. Once you have at least three Colossi, you can effectively wipe out Lucas without taking too much damage. Yeah. I mean, there are a decent amount of Swarmos so far, so it is going to delay Classic at least, but he is making that slow push across. I mean, these Locusts aren't going to last forever. In the meantime, we got another drop coming in. Looks like it's going to go towards that fourth base. 
What does life have to respond? Nothing just yet. Just one low, uh, Swarmos there, rather. Oh, finding the 6th and 7th Colossi, claiming both of them. What a counterattack, doing more damage than he could have ever imagined from this point on. Oh, but he's going to lose his fourth base here. Yeah. Target that down with those zealots. Pick up and get out of there. Luckily, his third base just finished in time, so we can saturate that instead. And now, Life's counterattacks definitely keeping Classic in his base, which is, is quite an amazing feat in itself, considering the army that Classic has at this point. It, it's really just a matter of him moving across the map before Vipers are out, I think, is, is the one timing that he'd really want to go for. But he is researching Storm now. So he, he does have a backup plan. He's going to get into that Templar tech and definitely have the ability to fight against Vipers as well. Some Roaches coming in for another counterattack. If they could possibly focus down that Nexus, could be a huge boon. Delay that fourth base coming in for the Protoss. That is a death sentence for the Zerg. They never want to see that fourth base. So he does get it canceled. But again, a lot of these Roaches will go down in the meantime. Once of these Roaches have gone down, it's going to give Classic the supply lead again. Life trying to stabilize. He does have a lot of Swarm Hosts. Currently 17, two Vipers on the map. He's gonna need all the Vipers he can get to pull this many Colossi. But we already have four Templar with this army. But they're gonna make things just a little bit harder. Sorry, six Templar. <laughs> and they have Storm. Here we go, more Roaches coming in for more counterattack pressure. Does get those cancelled, but he will go down. I cannot believe that he's actually finding ways to make these roaches work. It's such like an easy choke to defend against. It's one choke to four bases, but still, these roaches are finding ways in. Well, here comes the big push. Classic doesn't want to wait anymore. He doesn't want to sustain any more harassment. He wants to do harassment of his own while moving out on the map. He's got such a huge number of Colossi as well as those Templar that you were mentioning. We're going to need to see some god pulls here out of life. God pulls indeed the abducts. They're looking for it now. And two feedbacks, but he does get actually two Colossi. Only one going down. Every Locust has dropped as well. So this is going to give Classic an opening to get rid of all the static defense. And hopefully, for his sake, jump on top of these Swarm Hoods. He needs those Locusts to pop. Here they are. Now you want to get out of there. The Storms are going down on a lot of those Swarm in the front. Some Roach is trying to get a nice concave in the meantime. But again, a lot of Colossi in the back. There's just so much DPS in this army right now. He did maintain all his Swarm but one. So he can repopulate these Locusts. And here they come again. But can he actually oh. get this base in time and get out alive? Looks oh. like he will. Time Warp will go down. He's trying to focus down the Hive in the meantime. That's a lot of Zealots. That is a lot of Zealots, and it should claim the Hive. Those Roaches not doing the best job of targeting them down. It is so close, and he is going to get it. No more Vipers to life. Now, this could be the very last wave of Lucas we see. Roaches are going to try and do some damage while they lost, and these Swarmers are going to have to pull back. Not pulling back just yet. Roaches trying to delay, trying to buy some time. They do take down one of the Colossi. But again, this is not enough. GG. Classic able to take down life. Not what I expected, man, but he's able to do it. And that's a 3-0. That is a 3-0. For SK Telecom. So Very Legend, Legend gets his wish. Legend does get his wish. He gets to go home early and not age another day. <laughs> Fantastic work from SKT. Looking very well prepared today. He puts up his finger. That he does. That is such a big win for SK Telecom, actually. They're going to push way ahead here. They're going to get first place. And Starta Yellow is going to fall, actually, to 3-2 and two with a negative indicator. So yeah. not looking as good for them as it originally did. They really brought out such a sick lineup today with Dream, Dark, and Classic. And, I mean, Dream and Dark really finding the, the matchups they wanted, I think. Yeah. Dark keeps coming out on Foxtrot Labs. He looks so comfortable on that map, actually. Really liking his play today. As well as Dream. Dream is just impressing me every time I see that guy. Yeah. Really love the fact that he just like switched over to SK Telecom and he's just beginning to like burst and bloom into this amazing player, into this amazing flower. I'm just loving his play so far. Yeah, he, he really does have some inspirational turn, but uh, unfortunately for life though, he did show a very entertaining game despite his kind of situation. Some really impressive counter-attacking uh, on his part, considering the map and positioning. It's, it's so hard to find your way in with Roaches, but he still made it work, and he, 
he prolonged the game far longer than I thought was possible. Yeah, that he did. But again, you got to really hand it to Classic there. Some really nice defensive play. Dealing with all that annoying harassment. Eventually building up a big enough army there on three bases to go for the kill. And there you have it, guys. On the screen, Dream takes out Lenok. Dark takes down San. And Classic takes out Life for the 3-0. And SK Telecom will move into first place. They will indeed. Very nicely done. What a great day it has been today, Valdez. Yeah. Even though it wasn't the kind of back and forth day or half we got here from SK Telecom, still a lot of great games. And as I was saying before, SK Telecom Team 1 just moved into first with a huge lead in the indicator points. That is more than, that is five more than CJ Antis right yeah, now. Yeah, that is a huge lead. That's going to give him a lot of leeway. Coming into next week, they can, they can afford to lose games at this point. Very, very can. comfortable. And looking at like Jinner, Green Wings, and Starte Yoey, they're both three and two, but eight indicator points difference. Mm. Pretty insane, man. Definitely seeing the stronger teams come out in these early days. Still a long way to go, Valdez. Quite possible for some comebacks. Prime obviously has the longest way to go. They're a decent start today. Yeah, at least able to take that first win against KT Rolster. The KC Rolls, KT Rolls are fans and coaches. Definitely not so happy, I have to imagine. And here we go, taking a look at the winner's ranking. Zest going down to creator twice today. Does not get another win. Stays at five wins. He's now five and four. And I think he's played the, the most out of any other player. He's played nine games so far. That's definitely one way, way to put your player ahead. Is just play him all the time in every match. And you, there's a good chance you will get to higher the ranks because it is all about the wins, not about the losses. Yep. Unless there's two players with the same stats. Play him once in the beginning. Play him in the ace match. Uh, SK Telecom has already have a bunch of ace matches sent out Zest a lot of the time. Dark achieving another win here. Does go up.